welcome, welcome to podcast 30. Number 30. Of the Plutonium Show. Thank you all so much for joining. If you're new, welcome. And if you're um, a regular, welcome back. And yeah, we actually, I'm, I'm quite excited about today's episode. And um, initially, it was, you know, when you, when you start off a new week, you never know whether you're going to have enough topics to talk about. But then I think we all know exactly what happened this past week so but before we get there as usual if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to do that little red button down there and if you pop down to the description box you will find links to our ink ugh, to our ink to our instagram at lost beyond pluto if you're not following us there um please go ahead and do that and patreon if you'd like to support us further so yeah, let's uh, get right into it. Let's do it. We've got heaps to talk about today. We've got the Met Gala. Mm -hmm. We've got an Activision update oh. for those of you who are um, into the gaming scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do have an Ask a Lawyer segment questions list lined up, but we'll see if we can get to that within the time limit because, you know, we all know that the Times Magazine, Time Magazine 100 most influential people list is what the main topic is for today so oh, i think it's time for them to make a new list uh, oh my god you and your dad jokes <laughs> it just came i have no intentions of being a father and i've still got enough dad jokes to last it's, at it, least it's ridiculous 10 dads your, your actual dad is a lot less well he's not even lame at all <laughs> he's not lame <laughs> <laughs> he's actually really funny yeah. um i think you're funny oh thank you honey <laughs> that rhymed oh my gosh Let's drop a rap album. <laughs> well, it doesn't take any effort these days, does it? Eek. Controversial Eek. opinion. All right, let's let's. So, with, about the Met Gala, I'm not a fashionista. It's not something I follow. It's something that's always kind of been shoved down my face ever since uh, I was aware of it as a teenager, I suppose, maybe even when I was 11 or 12. And to be honest, it's the only show or event that I always found. A bit dystopian mm. or maybe more than a bit dystopian ever since i was a girl like a little girl it was it i, I loved the oscars i didn't mind the grammys like it was I, I get it you dress up you go to an event an yeah. award ceremony but this one the met gala in particular i don't know of all the events it's the one that really highlights the disparity between the one percent and the rest of us. Absolutely. And it's funny because when I the other day I asked you, well, what awards did they do there? And you were saying they don't do awards. It's literally for the museum. And yeah, they raise so they raise money for the um, so it's the Met, the Met Museum has a fashion costume department, basically. Yeah. And it's self-funded. So they have to raise money for that department to continue to exist. Yeah. And that's what the purpose of this event is. So it's not exactly charity. It's just a fundraiser. Yeah, funny thing about fundraisers, right? That's that's kind of like when you think fundraiser, you think, oh, here's a cause, here's something or someone that's in need, and you know, like uh, you think, uh, uh, I forgot. Oh my gosh, it's I I, I did it years well, ago. Well, like was, elephants without borders. Yeah, supporting elephants, donating to a cause. Yeah. Doctors without borders. Yeah. Um. Oh, by the way, I brought up elephants without borders because someone asked me to look into um megan said she would donate proceeds so i will talk about it it's part of the list world's greatest shave i did world's greatest shave uh years back i had long hair 2014 before we met yeah it wasn't quite this long but um it was longer it was longer yeah oh okay oh that's right because, it was like that long because i didn't know how to get haircuts back then. <laughs> like, you, you, you tell me oh you, you should probably think about getting a haircut because it's behind me for the most part yeah um so yeah so i did world's greatest shave but that's you know that's normally where you think fundraiser charity like those sorts of things this is a bit different yeah d regardless of the motivations or the reasons behind it what uh, the purpose of today's little segment about this really is I was on Instagram and you know how Instagram now your feed is not curated for you. You get random ads and photos and stuff that you don't even really, you're not really interested in shoved in your face. So 
and that's how I found out about the Time uh, Magazine 100, by the way. I, had, I found it on my Instagram feed, but we'll talk about that. So um, I had these photos shoved down my face, and we're going to show you the photos. And I was, number one, surprised that they even held it this year. Yep. Because, you know, we all know that the worldwide pandemic isn't exactly over, and there are still mask orders, and, you know, it's, it's not over. So, um... Yeah, that took me by surprise. But I guess other award ceremonies and the Emmys and stuff, they've been going on as well. Yeah, so, almost um, as if it doesn't really matter too much so long as you're in the 1%. What's yeah, the pandemic? I mean, people said that about uh, Obama's 60th. Mm. It was unmasked completely mm. when um, people had issues with that because their children under 12 are being forced to wear masks in school yeah. for eight hours and you know they can't breathe properly, but the elite can go to a birthday bash... I don't know if everyone was vaccinated. There are rumors that, not rumors, there are reports that some people were not vaccinated or yeah. double vaccinated. So there are, I mean, I think, I don't want to get political, but it's it's undeniable that there is like, you know, one set of rules, and we're going to see this in, in playing out in today's photos. One set of rules applies to the 1% or to the, you know, rich and famous, and an entirely separate set of rules applies to the rest of us. And because of social media, we're all becoming so aware of it. Mm. And it's causing unrest. Absolutely. As so, it should, because it's not right. It's it's not right, you know. I, I agree. If there's if there's a public health order mandating masks, then that's what just needs to be done, including by the one percent. Mm. I mean just the general notion of treating people lesser, right? I mean that's something that as humans it's it's not okay. Why do people feel as if they should be treated with respect? with respect naturally, right? Like you shouldn't, when someone says something horrible, demeaning to you, right? Why is it that we don't accept that? And then we go, that wasn't very nice. You know, because on a fundamental level, all of us deserve some level of respect, but then you introduce a class system and suddenly some people are lesser than others. And that's, that's a dangerous precedent. And this is kind of evidence of that. Well, the world's look back at history. The world's always been like this. There's Absolutely, there's always been a class system, a caste system, you know, yeah. a hierarchy since humanity existed, since yeah. the dawn of time. So, another thing that I have always thought about the Met Gala is it reminded me of the Hunger Games. Yes, and uh, way before, like you know, when the first Hunger Games ever came out, and I saw how they dressed in the capital. And how there was a huge difference in the fashion between them and the districts. Yeah. And I started thinking of the Met Gala every year as the Hunger Games kind of capital um, event. Yeah. You know, where the citizens of the capital go and that's how they dress up. And mm -hmm. the rest of us, you know, mere mortals are just nowhere to be seen or in the background, you know, fixing up their dresses and stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I thought, you know, a lot of the time we think that we are the only ones thinking a certain way or not not like oh i'm different no but it, it could be a stupid thought and you're like i'm probably the only one who thinks this way yeah. and then i found a meme on instagram of you know uh the celebrities at an event at the hunger games um at, at uh, pan am's capital yeah and i was like oh my god it's an actual meme yeah. so it's not just me <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna pick out whether it's a character from Pan Am's capital, or an actual celebrity in America. <laughs> because, I don't know, is there a difference? I, I feel like that dystopia is our reality. Yeah. Now, now more than ever. I don't know if it's always been this, this way, or and now we're older and we're opening our eyes to it, yeah. or whether the pandemic is really making it apparent. Mm -hmm. Because while these celebrities are getting all dolled up, and it's $35,000 ahead for a place at the table in this event oh. um incredibly expensive only the most ex you know it's i think the most exclusive one of the most exclusive events and one of the most expensive and these celebrities don't even pay a cent because mm. they're advertisements in and of themselves so they're advertising a designer or there are youtubers who yeah. somehow made the list by the way and um i read that youtube paid for their seats at the table because they're promoting YouTube. <laughs> of course they are. Promoting YouTube while also suppressing creators. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> so, One thing I've... Sorry to yeah. interrupt. One thing I found interesting was the figure, 35,000. Because 
used to be, I don't think it is anymore, but it used to be 40,000 was your average salary. Like if you got a good job, if it was 40,000, obviously this is before inflation, but that was, you know, that was... I wouldn't say that's a good salary. That's no, very low. but that's your average salary. Right? Yeah, well, for a lawyer, for those of you who think lawyers make good money, especially young lawyers, yeah. that's pretty much the starting point. Exactly. Yeah. And for a lot of careers, it could be. I found it really interesting that it's so close to the starting salary. It's a, uh, to make a, sure that yeah it's as if like if your salary if this is your entire salary don't even think don't about even think it. about it yeah i don't know i mean i don't know what goes into the budget and coming up with that sum but whatever it is mm. um i think uh we'll just start off so capital or n- new york <laughs> number four coming up that's cardi b Oh no, I gave it away. She's not a fictional character. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I can imagine about 10 homeless people would probably find that comfortable to sleep on. Jeez. It's just... Oh, and I just want to make a point. Um, we're not making fun of the fashion. I just... I guess we'll just keep going so you can understand the point of this. Uh, number three. Number three. There we go. Spectators. In Pan Am? Or in the real world? <laughs> I, I don't see a difference. See, this is what I'm I saying. I don't see a difference either. So, number number five? I mean... I just, yeah. I mean, this is really tame for Gaga. Uh, number ten. I think you can do them in order until 15. In order? Okay. In, at this point. That's Lily Collins. Yeah, that's Lizzo. I don't know her. Uh, I don't know these two, but they were so capital. They were so capital. No, wait, wait. Now let's go to Effie. Down there in the blue. They're right there. Yeah. Yeah, I just... I think that's more tame. It is more tame. I think that's more like... That's more put together. That's oh, let's actually- do the quilt covers from Rihanna. Uh, which one? The 15. 15? Look at them in their, in their duvets. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. And then Serena Williams. She's a good friend of Megan's apparently. Ooh, which uh, number? 16. 16. Yeah, it's just madness. I mean, it's crazy how much they look like they're in the capital. That's what I mean by madness. Uh, Priyanka Chopra, number 14, is also Megan's good friend, or at least she used to be. Look, it could, even the person behind her, that really colorful, you see that? Yeah. It's, is that Kanye in the Oh my back? God, it looks like Kanye. It is Kanye. I swear to God, if, if Kanye is dressed normally <laughs> at this event, if it you are, Kanye. if you overdressed Kanye, you're making mistakes. <laughs> like, and my goodness. Before we move on to a little bit of a point that the world has been making, let's, the Dementors were invited to the Met Gala. The Dementors, Mary Potter. <sighs> Look oh, at that. Man. I mean, while we're on the topic of inclusion, right? That's why they're all so far away because if you're if you get too close to a dementor, you're you know you f- you get all those bad horrible feelings like you're a shell of a human. Yeah. And they might suck your soul out. Yeah, I actually feel better with the face covered <laughs> than whoever's underneath the face. I feel better not seeing. You don't know who it is. I know who it is. That's why I'm saying it because. You know what? I- At least she uh, she's wearing a mask. <laughs> Hey! She's wearing a mask! Hey, I, you'd rather have too much than too little, right? Well, since we're on this photo, I mean, you look at... Look, this is where people have been having an issue. And I didn't even notice this detail. Uh, because I was, you know... Was, I kind of switch off when it's the Met Gala because I don't really like it. But the the normal people in the background all wearing black. And I say normal in, you know... Because, you know, the, we're all normal. I mean, we're all human, but... The non-celebs, the non-elites, they're wearing masks. And uh, the rest of the world, the audience, has noticed this. And if we move on to picture number 13. And there you see it in um, a lot more detail. It's They're all wearing black because they have to blend in. So whatever, which people also notice that's kind of like you're taking away their identity and stuff. But it's it's the job, I suppose. I don't I don't belong to that world, so I don't know. But um, the masks, you know, now there are arguments that this section, the red carpet was outdoors, 
And that's why the celebrities didn't wear masks. But when they were inside the actual museum, they did wear masks. And I saw photos. They had like stylish masks on. But um, if we move on to picture number seven. Seven. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's another one where you can clearly see somehow Bieber and uh, his wife are exempt from the virus when it's outdoors. But the working class are vulnerable to it. And that's what people are saying. This is, it's not something I'm coming up with. Mm. And, um, and then finally, then the f- second one is some, is a photo that people really have issues with because it's, um, oh man, that, uh, Alexand, what's her name? Oh, Sorry, yeah. I'm not yeah, into yeah, American uh, politics. A- Alexandra, o- what? I'm so bad. Ocasio Cortez. No, no, a- Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Yeah, yeah. I was, I wasn't actually yeah. pushing that on purpose. I actually didn't know. So, like I know her face, but yeah, people have. Well, you can see the masks in the background, and she really, ma- you know, she's really a pusher for wearing masks. And uh, her dress says "Tax the Rich," which people found ironic because she's at one of the most exclusive and extravagant events that are held that is you know held in in public because I'm sure there are more exclusive events that are private. But you know, one of these top elites, she's surrounded by the rich and yeah. and the famous. And people said the irony of uh, showing up to this event number one and then number two wearing this very expensive dress uh, with that message on it. Uh, she responded and said, I took advantage of a public event to uh, raise awareness to my message and the dress was borrowed. So she mm-hmm. didn't buy it. Now, again, I'm not going to, I'm not a political person. It's not that I have opinions and I don't want to share them. Even If I did, I wouldn't share them. But honestly, that's, it's not my country. It's not my politics. So yeah. Uh, the, the, the reason I saved this photo is for the masks again in the background. And in particular, she as a political character is very pro mask. So, um, and I want to make it clear that we wear masks. We do as we're told we're law abiding citizens. So we're not anti maskers or anti, you know, we're fully vaccinated. So this isn't a political stance. I know I'm re- repeating myself, but yeah, just to, there are just some to be people sure. out there. Just yeah. To be sure. Cause you know, it's, we can switch out. We can go back. It's to not exactly the, the we don't we just don't discuss that. That's not the channel we're on. No. Uh, so you know we have to be sure that we're we're not. A lot of people, especially when it comes to YouTube, a platform where things are um, censored and very much suppressed, uh, you know, often putting things between the lines is the way people communicate their messages. So you have to say when you're not putting things between the lines. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I just, I just, the reason I felt like I wanted to include this was the time period that this is happening, right? We're in the middle, or I guess maybe some people can say in other world, in other parts of the world, you're at the tail end of the pandemic. We're currently in the thick of it in Australia. And, um, we have all, you know, either lost jobs, have hours cut, um, there are people who have been holding jobs for 30 years yep. that have been let go. Yeah. There are people like us who are starting off in life and now that's been severely impacted yep. over the last couple of years. And, um, there are, especially women, I, I've heard that women have really been hit hard in terms of work. Mm. And then there's this event, you know, with billions, well, billionaires attending and collectively all those dresses that you see that they're going to wear once in their entire lives Mm. probably cost tens of thousands to make. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, it's not even to raise money for a charitable cause. It's just for the actual costume department. Absolutely. And especially because one of the channels I follow is actually just a repair guy in, uh, in New York, uh, Louis Rossman. Uh, and he often makes comments about how many businesses are shutting down in New York. The small ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you are still running a business in New York, especially the Met Gala, I'm assuming that you're doing okay for money in the middle of a pandemic. So yeah. no, you know. that's a great point. That's a great point. Um, and then finally the, the message about, you know, this, the masks, the masks and the maskless, you yeah. know, um, if you're outdoors and they're going to justify that, well, why not let the working class yeah. who are actually doing the physical work? There are many photos. I didn't even include them 
of yeah. picking up props and you know moving things around they squat up and down to readjust the dress like you know how you see those celebrities with their dresses all perfectly laid out on the carpet that doesn't just magically happen there were people before those photos were taken you know adjusting those dresses and those tails and they're doing physical work is my point yeah and they're the ones that are going to be breathing hard mm. and if anything they're the ones who maybe could take a break and get some fresh air while they're outside yep the celebrities are just posing yeah they're not exerting themselves so either m put masks on them all i guess is what people want or don't force the working class to put on the mask in the same environment Absolutely. in this outdoor setting um what do you all think do you think that well you know it's an event they've put on lots of makeup and it's part of their costume so they shouldn't be made to wear masks or do you think that there shouldn't be that disparity and the message of solidarity yeah. should be hey look we're celebrities we're yeah. all dressed you know maybe they can wear really fancy custom-made masks that match the outfit absolutely because they wore them inside anyway mm. um and yeah because the way i see it you know they're human too they could spread the virus absolutely they're no different to anyone else they don't have you know it's not something different when they go to the bathroom it's all the same yeah so i will, I will say yeah. though that the effort of putting on makeup and getting dressed is not an effort at all for celebrities oh well they just the, sit there and they get it done every even then there are people working yeah. for them so you know but yeah. anyway that's just a i'm very i feel very strongly personally about equality mm. so that's the only you know if you want to hold the event and dress up like your citizens of the capital which they basically are yes. by the way like even if they don't dress up like this every day like the capital citizens do it's their everyday garb in the capital I mean, new york of all places well the thing is yeah but i mean even if they don't look this way every day they definitely have that lifestyle that yep. was shown to us in the hunger games movies you know of this privilege of this completely different world yeah contained in the same country mm -hmm. So, um, and I hope all of you who are watching us know what we're talking about. If you don't know what the Hunger Games franchise is, it's, it's basically, it's, a it used to be a set of, well, it is a set of books that have been made into movies. And I know that many people, it's kind of like, it's almost like the new Harry Potter, I guess. I know a lot of people know about it, but just in case you don't, in that, uh, story, it's set in a dystopian kind of futuristic America called Pan Am, and the capital is the only uh, district that has, you know, wealth and privilege, and all of their citizens are well off, and they look extravagant like you saw every single day. And then the rest of the districts are just, you know, it, they're numbered, and the closer they are to the capital, the more well off they are. But then, you know, when you trickle down, they're really, they have it rough. And it's a very scary dystopia, but it's also a reality. It's funny too, because another thing that happens during the movies is that some districts actually have curfews. Mm. And that's something that's happened through the pandemic, where certain countries, states, uh, cities have had curfews. Yeah. And then, so you've got people in parts of the world that have to be home by a certain time, whether or they, they risk, work yeah. or not, or they you risk know, uh, hefty fines or jail yeah. time. Another thing too, is that uh, we had a whole bunch of protests uh, in Australia. Mm. Um, we've had them all across the country. Some of them have even turned violent. And that's another thing that happens towards the end of the series True. where the fight between the authority being police and the people, not that I mean to separate them, but that you know that's something that happens in the movies and so the met gala happening the same time that yes. we have these massive protests not just that i'm so glad you reminded me the protest yes we have in australia but right as the met gala gala i feel like it, when you say gala i feel like i want to say gala <laughs> but gala when the, when it was happening at the same time there were protesters getting arrested right outside i think they were black lives matter protesters yeah. and they were getting arrested yeah. as the event was happening mm -hmm. it couldn't get more dystopian than that it's insane it's absolutely insane and whatever you think about you know protesters whether they should be out there or not because you know I, again best we not get political about this mm. but it really is you know 
a, a really discouraging to see that, you know, there are parts of the world that claim to be civilized that are, you know, in battles on the street while other parts of the world just pretend like everything's okay. Like, can well, you... well, same, like, literally they're in the same location. Yeah, exactly. In this instance. Yeah. They're right outside. Yeah. Um, and another thing was, especially last year, um, a lot of people had issues with celebrities at the height of the lockdowns. Yeah. Where the rest of us were not only, you know, losing jobs and everything, but socially isolated from even those who we love. Yeah. There are people in Australia who, who couldn't even go to their loved ones' funerals. Yes. Their parents, their grandparents. Yeah. And Kim Kardashian, meanwhile, jets off with all her friends and family mm. to a private island mm -hmm. to celebrate her 40th birthday last year. Yep. And she's just one example. Many people, you know, will bring up, I think, Jennifer Lopez. They're all just jetting around. Yeah. Like an entire, they live in a different planet. Because the, the rules don't apply to them. And it's more evident during this pandemic than ever. Yes. And hopefully people who were, uh, I guess, I don't want to say disillusioned, but people who weren't aware of this now are aware of it. Yeah. Because this is the world we live in. Yeah. And I don't know what we can do to make a change in the right direction, but I think not worshiping and glorifying celebrities as much as the as much as the media would like us to is a good start. Well, I think social media is really helping with that because they're so accessible now that yeah. they're, all of us, especially um, no, not all of us, yeah, we see them as more human. Yeah, because they're on social just as we are. You can actually comment and. They'll read it. Sometimes they, they get hurt. And I'm not saying let's hurt them. No. But they do because they're human. Mm. Whereas before... And, and, and sometimes they bite back and they respond to you. Like Jennifer Lopez did that yeah. recently. And it just shows that they're human just like yeah. us. I think that's the good side of social media. Whereas before there was this barrier yeah. Yeah. of, you know, the ma gossip magazines can say all the crap they want. But yeah. the celebrity is shielded mm. if they don't read it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I remember actually uh, someone... Uh, roasted uh, Kim about something. They said, so oh, Chloe, oh, whichever one, I don't know. One of them. But they picked on one of them mm. and the rest of them came back at them, but it looks like they were like in a high school, like the yeah. things that they weren't, you know, somehow high and mighty about it. No, yeah. no, no, no. They were insulting the person who picked came the at them as yeah. if they were in high school. Yeah. So th hopefully when they're humanized that way, people will stop seeing them as another like you know like higher yeah oh, i can't even talk like they're better than us yeah. like they're a different species like mm -hmm. they're gods mm -hmm. you know what i mean worthy of worship so yeah yeah um i'll just quickly do this <laughs> because uh, yeah, yeah. i went and got these uh i might need your help holding them up let's see i'll go you hold those two in that order <laughs> what so, are we paid by uh <laughs> no but who uh, makes these uh Oh, that's a good question. Is it Warner Brothers? Lion, Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Yeah, okay. it's Lionsgate. Um, yeah, so uh, being that it is one of your favorite movie series, <laughs> we, I actually... <laughs> did I buy these for you? I yeah, think you I did. did. Oh, yeah. there's a glare. Yeah. There's so, glare um, yeah, four movies. And they did the thing where Harry Potter did and now everyone else has to do it where they split the last yeah. part into two parts. It's actually a trilogy. Yeah. But part three was split into two movies. Highly recommend if you haven't watched them. Absolutely. No matter how old you are, they're one of those movies where honestly, um, they're, it's, it's, it, it's for everyone. Yeah. And I think especially now, if, you know, it's going to hit home. It's going to be a little too close to reality. Yeah. Yeah. No, for real. Um, it's crazy because just 10 years ago when they were coming out and they were all the rage, um, honestly, I never thought that this, anyways, I think we're lingering too much on this topic, but this, you know, again, dystopia, yeah. this huge gap between the rich and the poor yep. is only getting bigger and bigger. Mm. And this movie is a good, a good symbol of that. So yeah. yeah. Shall we move on? Let's do it. To, no, we do want to talk about Activision. Absolutely. Before we get into time, 100 <laughs> most hypocritical sorry i meant influential people <laughs> list oh man yeah but yeah, i mean they can be bad influences right all righty so let me just pull I, up this article i doubt that's what they meant but okay that's not what they <laughs> meant but yeah. no i know i know <laughs> all righty so uh on the activision front because you know it wasn't enough that they've already got two lawsuits after them let's add another one 
So uh, this is <clears throat> from Bloomberg. Activision Blizzard's labor woes grow on union complaint to NLRB. What's you, NLRB? It's one of the, uh, I believe, bodies to protect employees in the States. And I think it was established as far back as like the 1930s. The act was established in 1935. Yeah. Yeah. So a union has filed a federal labor board complaint against Activision Blizzard Inc. Opening a new front in the legal battle over workplace rights at the video game maker. The employer has threatened employees that they cannot talk about or communicate about wages hours or working conditions sorry and working conditions according to a copy of the complaint obtained through public information the document also accuses activision of illegally telling staff they can't discuss ongoing investigations threatening or disciplining employees because of their activism deploying surveillance and interrogations targeting legally protected activism and maintaining a social media policy policy that infringes on workers rights activision didn't reply to requests for comment so that lawsuit just came through and especially after the protests and oh sorry i forgot to put the timer back on especially after protests and the entire well you know cyber world turning up in arms against them. Like, this was a physical protest. We showed the image uh, yeah. a few episodes back. Um, so the fact that they have completely tried to make it almost... Uh, I mean, it's like a dictatorship. It's like a regime. It is the absolute example of corporate greed to tell people that they can't do things that they should have the rights to do. Mm. You know? It, I don't think it's greed, it's corruption. Absolutely. Because it's not necessarily monetarily. I guess, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about the money. But this is just yeah. limiting um, their employees' rights. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything's about the money. It's all about the shareholders. You know yeah. what I mean? They have to make them happy. And they will lie to the shareholders. There are, I mean, the shareholders... They've already will, lied. They've and already then there's lied. a lawsuit. There's a lawsuit from the shareholders. Yeah. Because... They just want to make sure the shareholders are happy. They don't care how many uh, children they psycholo psychologically damage through their gambling tactics in video games. Or how many employees off themselves. Yeah. Because of uh, SA. Yeah, absolutely. Or how many employees they let go while their CEOs get hundreds of millions of dollars worth of bonuses. Disgusting. It's just... It's it, disgusting. I mean, I, I, they keep digging a hole for themselves. That's what confuses me. It's mm. like, it's bad enough what happened the first time we talked about them, the um, harassment and SA complaints. Yeah. And then they lied to shareholders, yep. and then they have that um, lawsuit to contend with. And now this. And they were destroying evidence, too. Th that, that, too. Yeah. And now this. Yeah. It's insane. This company, I mean, the CEO needs to get sacked ASAP. Mm. And this is the thing, because the the C because Bobby Kotick seems to hire so many politicians in as board members in Fran Townsend, who was pro torture, for example. Yeah. You know that's exactly what they would do in a government. They would burn and shred documents, right? If yeah. they were incriminated, because the government is the law, and so they are above the law, right? Yeah. So these guys really think they can just do what they did back when they were in the White House or back when they were in whatever government agency they were before. What's Bobby Kotick's background? I have no idea. I think he... Uh, I, I think it's something to do with businesses. But, okay. he, but, you know, this is the other point, too. How many CEOs of companies have anything to do with what they're making? You know, the, none of these uh, yeah. CEOs have anything to do with playing games. And it is so obvious yeah. to every person who plays games. It's yeah. like... I don't know. It's it, to me. I think that if you were the the CEO of um, of a publisher mm. of books, right? Mm. I would hope that you're a reader. So at you, least. At least. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, Andrew Wilson of EA, who release you know a whole bunch of gambling disguised as sports games. I would hope that the, at the very least, Andrew Wilson, who is unfortunately Australian. Um, I would hope that he would at least play sports games. Yeah. But I don't think he does. And I think that this is a huge problem. These mm. guys are in charge because they make shareholders happy. But that means that the industry is doomed. Mm. You know? Uh, I mean, it's like... I don't know. It's like how many, how many people at uh, Disney don't watch movies? 
You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, they're, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they, everything comes crashing down. Actually, no, because EA was such a controversial company, even just like around the time we met, even before 2014, yeah. but they survived and they yeah. re, I think they even fixed their image. It's funny. I was talking about this with someone else the other day, um, that it used to be the whole, the unholy satanic trinity of video game companies was EA uh, Activision and recently Ubisoft, right? Mm. And then it seems that Take Two, who are the guys who published GTA, have taken EA's place because EA, they said that single player games were dead, right? <laughs> and th those single player games are the story driven narratives. Those are the reason I play games. The only games I play, the only exactly. games my brother, well, my older brother plays. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. These single player story driven narratives. Because it's like watching a movie or reading a book. You get immersed. It takes you away. It's not about, oh, look, I'm shooting, you know, I shot some random yeah. stranger on the internet. Now I'm teabagging them. <laughs> you know, by the way, teabagging is just pressing crouch repeatedly over their head. Um, it, it, th that's the thing, right? That's the push. We'd rather you be shooting each other than get immersed in a story. Yeah. But then EA's turned around. They had the Star Wars license. For so many years and they released almost nothing. Yeah. So they were the only people who could make Star Wars games. They released one game which was sort of alright, Battlefront. Then they released Battlefront 2 which started the entire loot box dilemma in governments. Yeah, I remember governments that. started taking notice of the fact that you know, the games were aimed at getting children into gambling. Yeah. And now, because of all that controversy, EA made a story-driven game, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and it was a great game. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also made, uh, I think it was, I think it received great reviews, Star Wars Squadrons, which was a, a multiplayer game where you fly around in different, um, you know, uh, spaceships from the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Um, I don't play it because I don't play multiplayer games, but apparently that received good reviews. Good. Okay. So they were capable of it. You know, I mean, they just remastered rem uh, all of Mass Effect. Yeah. You know, so they're capable well, of it. I think the difference here, though, is EA was never accused of SA mm. and harassment. And that, you know, you get into really dark, dark accusations. Maybe Activision can't get out of this because of the nature of yeah. the, the criminal nature of the accusations. Whereas I, EA was more like, yes, Obviously, gambling is awful, especially if it's, I mean, if it's targeted at children, if you're an adult, do what you want. Mm. But, um, but it's just not the same as an employee offing herself Absolutely. on a retreat because of the harassment from her colleagues. Absolutely. Because so, at the end of the day, when you are a parent, you can make an informed decision about what games your children play. Yeah. But... It, but if you're working somewhere if you're working somewhere and then suddenly you've been SA'd or even her because I don't think she was SA'd but I think she was harassed absolutely. and ridiculed and nude photos were circulated she was destroyed absolutely emotionally yeah psychologically tortured basically but yeah so it's I don't know it's can they come out of it you think they can do you think they can rebuild their image and start from you know just kind of start from scratch I guess what I think should happen is that it should all be completely shut down. And if that meant that the intellectual properties such as Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, the games that I love playing, um, and all of the Call of Duties and all of the World of Warcrafts, if that meant that those games were put on ice and we didn't see a release until until the IP, you know, whatever copyright happened and those IPs moved on, yeah, I would be okay with that because at the end of the day, this is more than just games, it's people's lives. Yeah. And people are still getting harassed at their workplace. Yeah. And a creative workplace of all things, right? Because yeah. creativity is stifled by these sorts of things, Absolutely. you know? Uh, so I think that's what should happen. Do I think it will happen? No. Mm. I think that there's too much money mm. in this. I mean, they're releasing a Call of Duty this year. They're and people are going to buy it. And people are going to buy it. This is the problem we have with the gambling industry. I think it's because industry. it's children. It's also adults. There are lots of adults who play games who know nothing about the industry. Because the uh, demographic is so large on the video game industry, you have people who know everything about the industry as much as they can, like me, who you know, have spent... Um, so many hundreds of hours researching how to build a PC and all that sort yeah. of stuff. 
And then you have people who will just pick up, you know, the cheapest console and buy games and play and that's it. That's all they do. They don't want to get involved in, Yeah. I guess, the... What's the word? I, I don't know. But the, the guts of the, yeah. of the matter, which I, I, we're not judging. Mm. It's, you know, live... I mean, if you want to live your life that way, then... Yeah. That's fine. It's less stress for you, really. Yeah, I guess. As and a also, human. it's not as if you get that advertised as you walk into a game shop. You walk into GameStop, yeah. EB Games, any of that sort of stuff, and it's not as if you say Call of Duty Vanguard by the company that caused someone to s- commit self deletion. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm gonna confess and say, up until I met you, other than Bioware, because my favorite games are all made by Bioware. I didn't even know... I'm um, Bethesda, because of yeah. Skyrim. Otherwise, I had no idea. I never cared about who the developer or the publisher was. And yeah. Rockstar, because I love Rockstar and I love GTA. Hmm. But now you tell me take five. Take two. Take two. <laughs> take two needs to take five, seriously. <laughs> but Rockstar... So, what I'm trying to say is... I was also the type of person who would buy a game because I want to play it. Yeah. I didn't know. It's not that I didn't care. Yeah. I didn't even know who made it. Mm. Um, unless it was limited circumstances, but yeah, so it's it's not like you're a bad person. No, if you course. buy a game and you're not aware of the background of the mm-hmm. company, whatever. I mean, it's the same as uh, people who are going to go and watch Warner Brothers movies and know yeah. nothing about Johnny Depp. Exactly. And I don't begrudge them for that at yeah. all. Um, I think I, it's a personal choice if you uh, want to boycott. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's always been because I mean. Um, a close friend of mine always jokes that my boycott list is going to get to the point where I don't buy anything. You don't play anything, yeah. Um, which isn't true because the indie market is there and there are always peop- there are always avenues for creators to create things now. That's the beauty of the internet. But Whether they can get a chance to shine yes. in an oversaturated market, though, yes. that is dominated by these powerhouses Absolutely. is a different story, unfortunately. Absolutely. Yes, and depending on the platform, too, because... Uh, just to close off a little while back it was revealed that indie developers that is developers that uh, don't have studios of hundreds like some people make independent some people make these games by themselves they're amazing Um, indie developers are underrepresented by PlayStation because PlayStation is owned by Japan and they do things quite differently Mm. Um, they are almost extorted to the point of not being able to be promoted mm. um the the hoops they have to jump through yeah. versus a triple a game uh from a triple a publisher on playstation is insane and yeah. the thing is that when these indie developers came out uh, one guy came out and then suddenly all of them came out of the woodwork when they came out they couldn't say sony or playstation they said a developer that isn't green or red you know like that's how they had to say it because if they said hey i have a problem with the way you do business there goes their business, you know? Oh, you mean Sony will come down on them like a ton of bricks? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's yeah. an unfortunate... Basically, that kind of ties it up perfectly. I think that Activision Blizzard is too powerful and that they would have probably have to change some laws and some power would have to go back to the government to have that company removed. Uh, and so long as something's making money, it will never die. Yeah. That's unfortunately the way it is. Yeah, it's true. And on that comment, because we are both independent musicians, it's the same in Spotify, where so you know millions of independent musicians don't get a cent or mm. or just get cents. Yeah. And then people like Megan and Harry get um, hundred million dollar deals. Yeah. And they've only produced one podcast last christmas which they just introduced people to tell their stories yep so it's the same thing these because megan and harry which we're going to get into right now mm-hmm. are in the equivalent of a triple a mm-hmm. video game developer slash publisher mm-hmm. and um you know other people out there who work so hard to create podcasts on a weekly or some, like some people have like multiple episodes yeah. a week and uh you think they're gonna get a hundred dollar plus deal from spotify no so, they're not going to rake in the money because they're they're no they're nobodies in the world of 
the glitz and yeah. the glamour. Funny you should mention Spotify because a little while back, the CEO of Spotify came out and said, uh, just for some context, the average cycle for a musician, for, for a band, right? U2 uh, does this like on the clock mm. is every three years they'll release an album. Nickelback used to do it. Yeah. L uh, no, Lana did it more, more every year. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, oh, there was another one too. Uh, I think Dream Theater might be on that cycle now. But... Basically, it's an average of three years, give or take. Now, this gives the band time to write songs. Mm. This gives the band time to tour. This mm. gives the band time to, I would hope, go and be with their families, have some some of the off season. Yeah. CEO of Spotify comes out and says, if musicians, who, by the way, it doesn't matter if you're a famous musician on Spotify, you still get paid shit, right? Okay. And Right? He came out and said, well, if you really want to make it, you better release an album every year. So you're saying that U2 doesn't make money on Spotify. A lot of big acts don't make as much money as they do on Spotify. And sometimes when you find that an artist that you like isn't on Spotify, it's because... The, I mean, I'm not sure if it's changed. This could have been years ago now that I'm saying. But he came out and said, you need yearly releases. Like, mm -hmm. give me all the content. When he's already, like like, stifling that. But, but what were you saying? So you, they, they don't... It's not a good income stream it's not a good income stream no i'm yeah. again i'm not sure if it's changed but there was a time when a, a particular band that was somewhat famous came out and said we make diddly squat on spotify listens okay um oh and i i saw a comment saying um from a person saying oh i love you guys i listen to you on spotify all the time yeah and i was like um we're not on spotify <laughs> so uh, I actually did a quick search to make sure no one's illegally uploading our yeah. stuff, but no, um, I did do a trial with the first podcast, but yeah, we're not on Spotify, so uh, I'm kind of concerned. Who are you listening to? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, all right. Should we uh, get into it? The creme de la creme. Get into it. Look, first of all, I, I do, so this is the Time Magazine, Meghan and Harry, most influential people, right? They're on the list. And not only are they on the list, they made the cover, which don't worry, we're going to display it and analyze it. And I purposely withheld watching other YouTubers, apart from Lady C, um, because I can't help myself. I love watching Lady C. Um, I, I, I want to convey my own opinions about yeah. the images because I've seen a few memes here and there, which are funny too. And I'll see if I can pull them up later if we have time, but everything that we will both say in, in, in relation to these photos is completely organic. And, um, because there's just so many opinions out there and yeah. I didn't want to get influenced yeah. and, and biased about it. So first of all, full disclosure, this is basically, it was in the morning a couple of days ago when it was first announced and I was on Instagram drinking coffee out of, coffee out of this very mug. And my first thought when I saw um, it wasn't this image. Let's bring up, let's bring up uh, the one where they're both standing there, number 18. That's 18? the first, that's the one that Instagram threw at my face. Okay? Yes, because, oh, that's, that's another thing too. We should do a Facebook segment because Facebook's in deep water recently. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, here we go. All right, so this is the photo that, I first saw. My first thought was it was a CGI or fan art. One of them. My brain, the way my brain computed it was this is not a real photograph because, because it is that heavily photoshopped. Then I read the caption. You know, Meghan and Harry, Times 100 Most Influential People. And I literally choked on my coffee. I almost spat it out that's that was my initial reaction and then my second was zach <laughs> <You know? laughs> so um i'm I, I and i'm also gonna read um the blurb about them and everything because man there's a lot there's a lot to unpack this might be a bit of a longer episode and now that i'm looking at the time i think we're gonna delay ask a lawyer for next episode which is fine you know it happens when we have a lot of things to cover yeah so um yeah, my first thought was this is this is fake. It can't be real. <laughs> like it was a joke. Like I I still I still can't believe it. I think the only thing I have to say about this one to be honest is just how fake it looks. That's it. Mm. I don't have any nit because I know people are nitpicking with their outfits. If anything they're copying us and they're color matching each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're both wearing uh this green. I have to say uh you know, I'm going to get slated in the comments by people who just hate everything about her, but I do like the fact that she looks professional, she looks businesslike. 
and um, she has this thing where she likes to like she dresses monochromatically which i do as well in my real life not on the podcast you know matching colors and stuff so i'm biased i guess because i i also dress in a certain way but otherwise you could say it's a good outfit wasted on a bad person i i suppose all right moving on to the cover which is the most uh controversial and honestly i do have a lot to say about this as well this is another heavily heavily like uh, <laughs> again they don't look real they just don't look real they don't have a single wrinkle on their face um, you know, it's funny when we get to the blurb, I get so many mixed messages as, you know, uh, someone in, in their mid twenties in the world. I get the, the, the majority of the time I'm told I'm old, by the way. Um, but then I read blurbs about them. She's 40 and they're described as a young couple, the yeah. young woman, the young Duke and Duchess. And I'm like, I'm very confused. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm, I really am. So it's either their PR machine yes. is pushing this notion that... Because yeah. ever since they met, they're described as the young couple, the young newlyweds. And mm-hmm. I'm like, am I missing something? Like, Can I still call my, myself young when I'm when I'm 40? Because I am confused. Because right now, I sometimes I go, I should stop calling myself young because the world tells me I'm not. You remember what we were saying about classism just yeah. earlier, right? Yeah. I think that you're allowed to be older and be called young and be called young right and that's not to say you know i don't think anyone should be shamed for their age but i think that based on hollywood's rules you're allowed to be uh, an older woman so long as you're in hollywood so long as you have a name or you're famous or you you're on the front cover of time right but as soon as you're just everybody else you're not allowed to be your natural age you're not allowed to i mean celebrities aren't allowed to look natural so You know, why should you anyway? But it's all that sort of like one set of rules for one people, another set of rules for everyone else. That makes sense. I never saw it that way. Anyways, on to this photo, the young couple. (laughs) Um, The first obvious thing is the colors that they're wearing to me. She's wearing white. So she's the first, you know, she's the most, she's the brightest thing that your eye gets attracted to in the photo. And she's also, I mean, it looks like she's not smack bang in the middle of the frame, but she's definitely, well, she's standing in front of him, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, and he's wearing black. And you know what they say about people, you know, if you want to blend, if you don't want to stand out, and even the the assistants you saw at the Met Gala, or if you go to events and there are AV technicians all around, they're wearing all black because they want them to disappear. The higher ups, the organizers, they don't want these assistants to stand out and to be noticed and there's harry being dressed in all black behind her now he's a very tall man as we saw in the photo prior even with her wearing heels which i'm sure she was wearing her you know six inch minimum stilettos which and then probably on a platform as well and he's still significantly taller than her um here he's sitting down clearly on some kind of a you know, bench or whatever. And, um, but his body proportions still seem off to me. Yep. He seems compressed. Yeah. Does he seem compressed to you? Absolutely. He seems like he's in the most uncomfortable, like, position. And it's kind of, it's almost a metaphor for what we've seen in their relationship. Is exactly. That he has to bend and twist and turn to fit what she wants. Exactly. To the point where it makes him look lesser than her. Even though, you know, obviously the shot looks like it wants to get them on the same eye level. Yes. Yes. But you know what's funny? I've seen a lot of shots where uh, a strong, powerful woman you know, she might have been shorter than her husband, boyfriend, fiance, whatever. But they don't... A strong, powerful woman isn't threatened by a man's height. Well, exactly. Because he can't tell... Men are bigger and taller yeah. than women. So, uh, I don't know if they manipulated him, which I'm only guessing. It just, to my eye, it looks yeah. unnatural. I, I, I don't see why they needed to. Because uh, even the shape of his head, mm. they're the same size. And I... I don't know if they have the same size skull because, mm. you know, they're a man and a woman. Yeah. I mean, there are some extreme circumstances like me where you have a huge square face like I do and it's actually bigger than Zach's head. <laughs> but, but having said that, I'm also quite tall. Mm. So, but in their case, we know that he's huge and she's yeah. tiny. 
So um, people, I mean, Lady C, because I'm going to, you know, full disclosure, I watched her take on this and uh, she did notice this too. And she went, they're trying to put them at, as you said, the same level. Mm -hmm. When in reality, this wouldn't be the case. Mm -hmm. Even though he's sitting down, his, the size of, it, of his head's not going to shrink magically. Let's, let's do this from memory. When William and Catherine take photo, right? I'm assuming Catherine is shorter than William because... If, yeah, even if, though she's very tall. If Harry's tall, then that would obviously mean that William's probably tall as well. And do you ever see William bending down to match her height? Well, I'm pulling up a photo now. No, it looks very natural. Well, they're, they're, it's, they're sitting they're here, sitting. so it's not quite... Um, but, <laughs> okay, it looks natural. Well, they haven't posed for a mag... Oh, there! Right there! Right there! Yeah, All right, come on. Let, let me, me open that. For, hold on. Let me just open it in a tab first. Yeah. Okay. Let's pull this up. It's very similar in... Uh... Future king and queen. And does she look like she's threatened by his height? Yeah. No. She doesn't. In fact, even better is that they're holding each other and it gives me the impression that they're a unit. They are a couple. They are together. They are stronger as one. Not that one serves the other. He's not holding her like she's an accessory and he's not... Um, He's well, not holding, and she's not bringing him down to try and get above him. And they're and and they're le they're standing at on equal footing. If that mm -hmm. makes sense, she's not in front of him. Yeah, I think this was released to honor their on the occasion of their tenth wedding anniversary as yeah. well. By the way, so, um, yeah, it's it's day look, nine. Yeah, let's switch back. Let, to let's let's nine. compare to this. Oh, and yeah, exactly. And, and there it is. It's it's one very unnatural, very photoshopped, very artificial. And very much trying to convey the message that Harry cannot be taller than her. Yeah. And then um, the memes, because obviously I, you know, I couldn't escape them. There are memes about him being her hairdresser. I told you about this one. <laughs> yes. And showing her like, what do you think? What do you think uh, about your, right, your, right. your hair? And because hairdressers also wear all black. Yeah. And usually they do this. I've, yeah. I've, like, I've had my hair done. I've had a stylist stand behind me and <laughs> do this and look into the mirror and go like, what do you think? The only thing that gives it away that he's not a hairdresser is that she's not verbally abusing him throughout this because oh that's God. what she does to everyone who's serving her, right? I don't know. I don't know if she'd do it to, um, you know... She probably knows how to play nice when the occasion calls for it. But, um, yeah, I think, I think it's, to me, just she's standing, you know, she's doing what they call the power pose, you know, with, their, with your legs kind of apart, that kind of almost superhero pose. You know the one yep. where your legs are apart? Yep. Um, and he's sitting down and hunched over as well. He's not even standing tall and proud. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I think, as you said, this image is a perfect representation of the dynamics of their relationship yeah absolutely because um yeah she's at the forefront he's just playing yeah. the supporting role he's gone from the prince mm. to i don't know the 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 assistant the, the accessory i guess yeah the accessory great and one thing i want to say usually especially back in days of old you know it would always be the man at the forefront. And the wife had the supporting role. Yeah. That's how it is, even with the first lady and the president, right? Um, and they say behind every great man is a, is a great woman. Yeah. So if this was anyone else, if this was, let's say this was a woman who was a politician or who was a president and her husband was actually just supporting her yeah. in that role... I don't know if I'd have as much of an issue about her standing in front yeah. because she is the leader mm. and he's he just happens to be the husband. Yeah. It's kind of like how Prince Philip, when he was alive, may he rest in peace, you know, he had to always... The queen yeah. was at the forefront. Yeah. But it was deserved. That's, yeah. that's how... That's the stature that they both found themselves in, right? Yeah. So there is a time and place for it, but it certainly isn't when Rachel's in the room. Not only that, she was, you know... A, a commoner yeah she he elevated her absolutely and so, she's done nothing but be a home wrecker so it's well she the yeah the relationships uh the family relationships yeah but so that's what i'm trying to say it's if this was well deserved yeah then maybe we should start normalizing when it happens 
because it has always been the case in history when a man is always yeah. at the forefront. And mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm all about equality. So if a man gets to be at the forefront with a supporting wife, then why shouldn't a woman be at the, so- at the forefront with yeah. a supporting husband? But that's not what she didn't do anything to deserve being in the forefront is no, what I'm trying to say. She didn't. And she thinks she did because she snagged a prince. But honestly, anyone who is, was as manipulative as her could have taken Harry. If Harry wasn't as uh, daft as his own mother said, um, if he wasn't, you know, as thick, um, <laughs> as, thick as, as he is... She wouldn't have made that. She took advantage of the situation. Yeah. That's how she got here. So Absolutely. even still, I don't think that be- being a manipulative person is an achievement. I think it's a disease. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, it's not an achievement. Um, and before I forget, this image creeps me out. Yesterday, I was looking at it, you know, just staring at it. And uh, it disturbed me. And I was trying to figure out why. Initially, I thought it was because it looks fake. And it, it's, it's related to that. This image to me gives me a feeling that she thinks that she has ascended and she's no longer human. You know, like she is otherworldly. She's a goddess. She's above us. Like she's transcended into another being. And when I think back at the Megan before Harry, how down to earth she came across and, you know, she was just, you know, the gal next door and just um, your friendly, you know, blogger and whatever. To, to this, it's a stark difference. It's almost like it's a different person. And it makes me feel uneasy. It makes me feel like... Yeah, it really makes me feel like she thinks she's ascended into godhood in this image. One thing that I believe about these people is that they always had that inside them. They always were that person. They just knew that they couldn't get away with acting like that. Because I think that's what she wanted. This came out almost immediately. The, like... The moment she even getting married and with the whole like Princess Eugene debacles and every single time she picked a fight there, right? It's as soon as she can get away with something, she will. Yeah. As soon as she has, as she give her an inch, she takes a mile. Yeah. So I don't think that she was ever a good person. I think this, that this is one of the things she's always wanted to do. Be above others. It really disturbs me. Maybe this whole Time Magazine 100, you know, I'm sure there are many people who are worth being on the cover, but... I don't know. There's something... Again, the feeling it gives me is this dystopian world where they're gods Mm. and we're mortals and uh, we'll never, ever be on the same level. I hope that this turns things around and people, instead of people in Time going, who's going to be on a magazine? People think, should I bother being on Time's magazine? Because honestly, I've lost all respect for them. You know, whether they did it unironically and they actually think that these people are a good influence on the world yeah we'll get into that or whether they did it to be controversial controversial why did i say that what the hell it's okay we talk a lot yeah um <laughs> whether they did it to be controversial both are bad i don't think that being controversial is a good character well, trait we'll get into that let's get into the last photo quickly because it. it's also another very disturbing imagery that it, it's it's reminiscent. First of all, it, it also looks like a tacky uh, ad for clothing. I mean, every ad is tacky, but go on. <laughs> no, not every ad is tacky. Those high end, uh, I love them. Like, even though I don't, obviously, I, I can't, you know, I don't buy designer clothes and, you know, Dior and Chanel, but I do love the models and the poses. Yeah. I think they're very high end. But this looks tacky to me. And also, there's a bit of a, it's a weird, like, what? Why are you, I mean, I don't get it. It's, it's very jungle like it's very garden of edenish what are they like adam and eve you know what i mean yeah did you get what i'm saying yeah eve if she uh you know took the apple and never gave it to adam <laughs> i like that they're matching but i'm biased because that's kind of what zach and i do yeah, i mean, <laughs> I mean we've today got rick and morty yeah today. we've got rick and morty but the color scheme is obviously not the same um yeah, I, I, I like her outfit. I, I do like the way she dresses. Again, full disclosure, I, I love the business. Uh, Zach and I have, that, when we met, one of the things we bonded on was how we wished we could just wear suits yeah. and just go out everywhere living our lives like it was the 1940s, you know, men Absolutely. in the 1940s. Yeah. And just wearing suits and looking really dapper. Yeah. So, um, man, maybe when we get a little bit older, 
And we still, if we still have the show, we'll start dressing in like really smart clothing. All yeah, the time. I hope we go. I hope that episode thirty today, episode three hundred one day. Who, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um, but yeah, like we're. I think we're gonna outgrow these clothes um, in a few years. So you know, let's screw that. If we are a fan of something, we should be able to represent that. No, I know, but it's nice to look smart. Yeah, of course. It's nice to look put together. I love it. I will say, you know what this reminds me of? What? A Target ad. That's what I mean. See? Yeah. Tacky clothing ad. Yeah. A little, like you could put Target at the top and <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know the difference. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, wow. They should get that guy to play Prince Harry. Uh, oh, and one more thing I noticed people have been saying, because I'm not, I, I didn't notice, was that they gave him extra hair. Because he's balding. He's like, he's got a really yeah. big bald spot in the back. But, uh, but that's, you know. It's not like what everyone, everyone, Prince William's balding. So I will um, say that Prince William seems to be owning it, and I think yeah. that's good. However, I'm totally not against people who want to hold on to their yeah. hair. I think that I think you can go both ways. I, I have, uh, I've known people who just give up on it and go bald. Yeah, and I know people who hold on to it, yeah. and I think that yeah. Um. While we're on that topic, quickly, there's no shame, in my opinion, in a man wanting to hold on to his hair. Or getting treatments because yeah. it must be traumatizing. No Absolutely. one ever stops to think that men can be attached and are attached to their um, appearance and their hair. I mean, I know girls who cry at the thought of uh, if, if they go get a haircut. Yeah. Um, I used to make fun of them when I was younger, but now I've kind of matured out of that. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, you get attached, and if it's falling through no fault of your own yeah. and it's genetically programmed and it can be traumatizing. So that's why I'm like, people are pointing it out. I don't want to make fun of someone who's balding. If he wa- if he wants to, you know, if he's asked them, hey, can you put in a little bit more hair there? Yeah. Whatever, if that's what you want. I mean, he's rich enough to, I guess, have really good looking, like Elon Musk. Yeah. Hey, look up Elon Musk. He had like, he was literally bald. He had See, like, I, I didn't even know that. He had a receding hairline. And then because he's so rich, he had a very convincing hair transplant. Let's have a look. Elon Musk hair. Because I thought it was his. I thought it was his real hair. Uh, let me open it as an image, though. There. Can we p- pull that up? Yep. Did anyone else know of this? Because I didn't. <laughs> and I literally thought it was his real head of hair. So I'm very... You know, I'm very impressed. I remember back in the day when I was super young and I heard about men getting hair transplants. It looked awful. It looked awful. So I think mm-hmm. either money obviously um, always gets you, well, not always, but for the most part, gets you better quality things. So maybe it's the case of that. Or maybe the technology has just evolved so well now that it looks so good. Yeah. Anyways, um, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All right. Now, let's read... Well, first of all, before uh, actually no, let's read the commentary and then let's read the blurb, which by the way was written by a personal friend of theirs, oh my gosh. a chef, oh okay, my gosh. a Spanish chef by the name of Jose Andre, Andre Andres. I don't know if you pronounce the S. Um, let's pull it up on the screen if I can close this stupid. Uh, it doesn't look like I can. Yeah, it's the I answer can. There. Yeah. No, I can't. No, it's there. I see it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's pull it up because I will be reading it out. So might as well. Here we are. All right. So there's a famous TV interview of Harry, the Duke of Sussex, when he was an Apache helicopter gunner a few years ago. He's sitting close to an airfield in Afghanistan, commenting on some royal news when there is a bang and a group of soldiers scramble behind him. In one swift motion, he stands up, rips off his microphone, and runs toward the action. The same sense of urgency drives Meghan, now the Duchess of Sussex, who has long been an active humanitarian and a powerful advocate for women and girls around the world. This type of work is what feeds my soul, she wrote in a 2016 essay. Springing into action is not the easy choice for a young Duke and Duchess who have been blessed through birth and talent and burned by fame. It would be much safer to enjoy their good fortune and stay silent. Your friend, Jose, is telling you guys what you need to do. (laughs) Can I also Uh, just say right there, off the bat, this article opens by looking at Harry's accomplishments or something he's done good and immediately taking it away from him. So, 
He did this thing in Afghanistan. He ran towards the battlefield. He's brave. He's courageous. He's good. Oh, no, but that's Megan. Yeah, but he didn't take it away from him. No, it's not, but that's immediately what it does. It doesn't go, here's what Rachel did. It goes, oh, Rachel has the same thing. Mm. You know, it's really I, like a, a, a I get pool. what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, he goes, they could easily keep quiet and have a good life, which I agree. They could easily and probably should do that. And that's what they said they wanted. Yeah. That's what they said they wanted. That's what drove Meg's it. But that's not what Harry and Meghan do or who they are. They turn compassion into boots on the ground through their Archwell Foundation. They give voice to the voiceless through media production. Hand in hand with nonprofit partners, they take risks to help communities in need, offering mental health support to black women and girls in the U.S. and feeding those affected by natural disasters in India and the Caribbean. In a world where people, in a world where everyone has an opinion about people they don't know, the Duke and Duchess have compassion for the people they don't know. They don't just opine, they run toward the struggle. Okay. There's a, there's, there's a really a lot to rip through here, okay? Oh my gosh. I mean, look, I'm not going to say anything about Harry's military service, being no. someone of service myself. Um, people say that he was a coddled prince. I don't know personally about that. I do know service is very hard. There's a lot of sacrifice. The training is the toughest thing that you can voluntarily put yourself through, in my opinions, having yeah. been through it myself. So kudos to Harry for his service. I'm not going to comment on that. But, um, which I guess leads us to what you said. But what about Megan? I mean, yes, yeah, she wrote a few articles on her blog, um, and yes, she went on those humanitarian trips that miraculously only happened the year she met Harry and then stopped yep. promptly as, as soon as she bagged him. Which this was before the pandemic even came around, so she doesn't even have that excuse. Exactly. Because, you know, as far as I know, yeah, there have been a few uh, photographs of them helping get food to people during the pandemic in L.A. and stuff. But why are there cameras? I want to know, why'd you, have, why'd you always have a set of cameras following you whenever you do good? Why can't you just do it on the down low? Here's, this is the thing, right? We can switch out. Oh, yes, let's do that. This is the thing, right? Is that people who do good deeds only when people are watching, right? Versus people who do good deeds regardless of whether people are watching. Mm-hmm. And this is, in contrast, she does things that are horrible when people aren't watching. And then everyone finds out anyway. So... You know, we're not buying it. Yeah. We're not buying what you're selling. And, oh man, the, the worst is, the worst of it gets with the compassion part. It's, it's, it's insane. Because look, Archwell, again, we've already uncovered through Omid that they have a for-profit arm yep. of Archwell. So let's not pretend that it's just a foundation to do good. That's thoroughly been, you know, debunked. Um, they give their voice to voices through media production. What are you talking about? The one podcast that they put out or cause everything else they do is just me, 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 me. Yeah. I mean, I have actually taken the time to watch all these zoom interviews that Megan has done with fortune magazine and all that. And very much like the old Megan, it's all about her. The questions are always targeted at what advice do you have to, you know, young social media influence? And then she goes, I don't use it. It's really bad for me. I don't know. You know, people who use it, they're drug, they're, they're addicted. That's why they call them users. I, 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 I. And also dismissing the platforms that often criticize her. Well, before Harry, she was a prolific social media user. In fact, she, she's a blogger, right? Well, she was. Yeah. And her, she had a personal Instagram and she had the Instagram for her, the take for the blog that she had. And she was, when I say prolific, that woman posted food shots, scenery shots, travel shots, facey, uh, faces. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of <laughs> selfies, uh. selfies. She, she, was, she wasn't one of those celebrities like Angelina Jolie who barely, who never used it and only recently joined and her face isn't even really on it. It's all about the causes she believes in. No, Megan was a prolific social media user. Just taking a stab in the dark here, I can't imagine that there is a single blog in the last 15 years that has not relied on social media for its outrage. Exactly. Right? So for her to say, look... I don't want to, well, this is not, you know, this is not meant to be dissecting what she said in that particular interview, but her message was social media is trash. Yeah. And um, she didn't acknowledge that not everyone has her platform. Yeah. We, 
I mean, we need social media. I'm a very private person. Yep. I mean, you don't even, and you shouldn't know my name. Um, I don't want to necessarily put myself out there in the way that many social media influencers, and I, we're not influencers, but these social media influencers want to, and they profit off of it, and they're comfortable with it from the looks of it. But, you know, there came a time where I realized I have to mm. have a social media presence if I have any hopes of growing this channel. Yeah. It's not a matter of, sh it's not a matter of, you know, you whether you want to or not. Yeah. It's, an, it's a necessity for those of us who don't have her platform. You can't paint a brush over all of social media and say it's all bad because as much as I want to say that Facebook is just a glorified billboard these days, there are still people out there who probably use Facebook to communicate with their friends and family as it was originally intended. Yeah. As much as I hate the amount of restrictions on YouTube and how it's all designed to the moment you do something that's not abiding by the super strict rules that suddenly your, your income is gone, right? As much as I hate that, I am on YouTube every day and I enjoy content creators on YouTube. I use the platform. So... And then, you know, you have other platforms which are much more, um, I guess, controversial, like Instagram, like Twitter. Like yeah. there's so many platforms there that they have their good sides and they have their bad sides. But the entire internet is like that. But she, yeah. So when the question was, give people advice on yeah. how to navigate, she goes, I don't do it. Therefore, I don't have advice. That's pretty much it. She goes, I ignore it. I ignore the noise. So I'm just trying to say that what, what, how, how has she given voice to the voiceless? Even when she and Harry visit, you know, mental health events and stuff, all they talk about is themselves. Yep. Um, so, and then here he says, offering mental health support to black women and girls in the U.S. I, I'm not seeing it. And then here, they have compassion for the people they don't know. They don't what? even have compassion for the people they do know. Exactly. When I read that part, I actually laughed out loud. I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Her own father? She has no compassion for the man that literally, I think I even took a screenshot on my phone. I was on Pinterest and an Instagram from her, um, a screenshot from her old Instagram came up. This was posted June 19th, 2016. Meghan Markle's Instagram. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. I'm still your buckaroo, and to this day, your hugs are still the very best in the whole wide world. Thanks for my work ethic, my love of Busby Berkeley films and club sandwiches, for teaching me the importance of handwritten thank you notes, and for giving me that signature Markle nose. I love you, Bean. Two years later, your dad's dead to you. Through no fault of his own. It's whatever suits. It must have been a year where praising your father was going to get you extra publicity. She praised him all the time. Even in her UN speech in yeah. 2015, she gave a UN speech for UN women. And she brought up her father. She's like, my father is a feminist. And, you know, he instilled these values in me. She never mentioned her mom once. And her mom accompanied her to that event, by the way. It was all about her father. Maybe he was supporting her financially. Yeah. He was benefiting, benefiting her in some way. He must have been. Mm. Because she was so about her father. So basically, she won't bite the hand that feeds, which is the... I mean, even then, it's like not necessarily true because she absolutely bit the royal family as many times as she could. <laughs> but she won't... Are we assuming that she won't bite Harry until, you know, they separate? And then when they separate, then suddenly he's dead to her? It's like... You know, yeah, I, should, we know. I should say if, but... Who, who knows um, who's next on the chopping block for her? But because we're really... Uh, getting there with the time um, I'm going to speed things up a bit so this compassion thing is bullshit yes. it's a joke it, that part in particular is an actual joke um, this woman just look at the way the Oprah interview a dying Prince Philip where's the compassion there so you know it's not, she, it's not just her family she's gone and torn a pow a uh, pow, pow. She's gone and torn apart her husband's family. The family that opened up their arms to her and welcomed her. And yeah, so where's the compassion there? So you only have compassion for those who you don't know, which aligns with her personality type. These people are the nastiest, yep. the people that they're closest to, yep. their family most, most predominantly. And they save that, you know, they save their best face yep. to strangers 
who could benefit them. Yeah, I've seen it before. I've seen people who are just like, they're totally horrible to anyone who's close to them. And then as soon as it's a new person, a new face, yeah. oh, it's this complete act. It's like, oh man. Yeah. So now to the question of how the heck did they get on this list? My first two theories or thoughts rather were paid off. Yeah, that was my first thought. I thought about that. Can you do that? I don't know. I mean, money makes the world go round. It's not um, a far-fetched proposition, right? It's not a far-fetched thing to think about. Yeah. Or Time Magazine, uh, I've heard from Lady C, and I thought this before I watched her episode, to be honest. Maybe their reputation is tanking. Yeah. They're not being taken. They're not what they used to be. Yeah. The internet has taken over. Yep. In terms of publication and news outlets and stuff like that. So they know that they're an incredibly controversial couple. Because these, this couple, they were booed when a segment of the Oprah interview was aired um, at the National Television Awards in, in, in the UK. Like wow. last week or two weeks ago maybe at this point. They were booed, when not by everyone. But people booed. That gives me a hope for humanity. <laughs> and as we mentioned in a few episodes ago, their popularity has tanked 50 points. Yeah. Which has never happened before. In fact, Prince Charles, when his affair with Camilla was um, exposed, his popularity tanked either 30 or 40 points. Yeah. So Harry surpassed him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's just the thing, isn't it? If you want to look at Rachel's accomplishments... Where's that? That's an accomplishment in itself. Tanking harder than than that whole Camilla affair. That is what she does. And instead you had to put Harry's military service right in front of, oh, now we switch to Rachel. Like you, you think, oh, military service, brave, noble. And you have to try and make such illogical leaps and bounds in logic. Illogical leaps and bounds in logic. Um, you have to make such huge jumps and to just get anywhere near her being a decent human being yeah it's it's what qualifies them how have they influenced the world other than being and yesterday i was uh watching a news channel on youtube and they described them as the f face of the whiny ungrateful spoiled brat millennial which it took me a while for it to sink in because they are quite a bit older than the two of us and i was like wait they're millennials like yeah. <laughs> it hit me i was like wait we're millennials i mean they're at the beginning of it we're at the end of it but we're still technically the same generation i felt so embarrassed yeah i was like no no i, I never saw them that way yeah, absolutely. you know but it kind of grouped us together and i felt horrified yeah i imagine there are boomers out there who they hate the fact that boomer is a meme because it's like <laughs> hey i'm sensible i didn't you know i didn't do such uh silly things is what the boomer meme has become yeah yeah it's like I, I and this is a legitimate question it's like why what how have they influenced the world i'm serious because the only thing they've done is whine and bitch and complain and make things up yeah. to further their narrative yeah things and i can say this now the the Archbishop of Canterbury came out himself and said that he never married them, yep. which is a very um, diplomatic way of saying she's lying. Yes. So the only influence they've set upon this world is icing your family, you know, cutting off people yep. for no reason, yep. using people and discarding them. That's yep. the message sh she's giving. It's okay to be a social climber. It's okay to use people as long as you get what you want. It's okay to marry men to get ahead in life and then dump them, literally FedEx yeah. back the, the, the rings, which her father confirmed, that story. Um, it's okay to make up lies and crap all over the royal family or any family, your husband's family, yeah. after they've welcomed you with open arms. Uh -huh. And then you leave them without even giving them 10 minutes notice. Like the queen was told last minute that that's what Harry and Meghan mm. were going to do, like up and go. You lie about wanting to relocate, so that's what your influence is. Lie about where you're going, um, because they said Canada, and then they basically that was just a little detour so they can go to LA. And then you set up this huge interview full of lies and rumors and accusations that probably sped up the death of 
a 99 year old i entirely agree with that I in think, hospital i think he might have likely still been alive today if it wasn't for the stress that rachel put on that family. we don't know that he was very old and yeah, very course, frail so we can't say that but maybe it sped it up it definitely contributed to the stress of a 95 year old queen yeah. who is also newsflash a human being yeah she's human one of my patrons told me, um, you guys have made me see the queen for the first time like in, the, in, in a human light. Yeah. You know, they, they feel sorry for her, basically. And I was like, well, that's what she is. Yeah. She's human. And where, where, where is the compassion there? And that is the only example that this woman, and unfortunately her husband, have set, in my opinion. Mm. Compassionate people don't need to constantly ask others to call them compassionate in Times articles. Their actions... Time. There's no S. In, their, in Time articles. Their compassion is what speaks volumes. Their action in compassion. The same with generosity. The same with being a good person. People will say what your actions prove. If you're a liar, we're going to call you a liar. If you're a traitor, we're going to call you a traitor. If you're if, a tyrant. If you're a tyrant, you'll be called a tyrant. It you know, doesn't matter. I mean, look at dictatorships across the world where you, it is illegal to talk illegally, negatively, yeah. negatively about the government. Yet, it still happens because people will call out the truth. If you want to be generous or known as a generous person, be generous. Don't just have people write articles about you. If you want to be remembered for good things, then do good things. Yeah. And um, I'm just convinced that this is... Yeah, I, I think Time Magazine are just taking advantage of yes. their, uh, their clickability. People yeah. like... You know, as much as people dislike them, as, you know, we all still talk about them, and people want to hear about them personally. I also, you know, if I see one of my favorite YouTubers talk about Meghan and Harry, I'm going to click. Yeah. That's just how it is. And they know it. And Time Magazine knows it. Because specifically this year, th these people are not well liked. No. Globally, more times than not, I hear people say they're sick of them. Mm -hmm. They just want them to go away. Yeah. Um, the Obamas didn't even invite them to their birthday bash. Yeah. And... You know, I'm basically, I'm, even Hollywood's not accepting them. Yeah. I'm not seeing them on the scene. And people are like, oh, it's because they're, they probably are rejecting all these invites, please. Over, ah. it, over my dead body, they rejected an Obama invite. Oh, my They, they didn't even receive one. It's well known. Kate and William, Catherine and William did. Oh, well, there you go. They so, didn't go, obviously, but yeah. they got an invitation. Yeah, absolutely. But these two didn't because they're an embarrassment. It's now a liability to be associated with them. I mean, where's Serena Williams? I haven't seen her come up and, you know, Serena Williams, the tennis player. Yeah, yeah. She was uh, very tight with Megan pre-Harry. Mm. And then, you know, when things start to go south and Megan start to show her true colors, even those high-ranking celebs are, like, like keeping their distance, yeah. you know? Well, so it looks like it's time for Time Magazine to hopefully take a hit in credibility across the board, maybe even take a hit in sales to show that perhaps... Perhaps maybe putting someone on the front cover who is to is basically preaching do as they say, not as they do, uh, isn't a good move. Especially when, because normally when you say would well, someone will be on the front of a uh, Time magazine cover, I would go, oh, what have they done? Yeah. I would actually genuinely think that that person has done something. With yeah. Them. Now I will question every single person on the front of Time magazine. I will go, gee. I wonder what they're actually doing there. Yeah. Um, but having said that, just because someone's on the cover of a magazine, that, like, Elizabeth Holmes was <laughs> on the cover of Fortune magazine and many other publications in 2014, 2015, as this CEO is out for blood. And she was, you know, people took her seriously because her face was plastered on a magazine. She was the reason that I lost all credibility for TED Talks. <laughs> yeah, you told me that yesterday. Yeah, because I now it used to be I watched a lot of TED talks, yeah. right? And then when I heard that, I went, "So, 
someone could be on that stage lying to my face yeah. and I'm going to take that as life advice. Uh-uh. I'm, I, you've lost credibility. You've lost my trust. Yeah. Bye-bye. So, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is, look, it's being on the cover of a magazine, especially nowadays in today's world, it's not that big of a deal as it used to be. Yeah. And it doesn't legitimize someone. That's why I brought up Elizabeth Holmes. You think the fact that she was in the cover of Fortune magazine is going to come up in the trial as it, you know, oh, no, she's legit. Look, she was on the cover of all these magazines. Yeah. People are outraged over this cover, over this, you know, over, over Meghan and Harry. If anything, this is only going to serve to tank their popularity further because go all over the Internet. This is a joke. Yeah. People are actually boggled, like their minds are blown over how this happened. I mean, you have the Pierce Morgan Ofcom victory yep. that proved she is a tyrant who is trying to stifle freedom of speech yep. of a journalist, no less. Yeah. And whose job it is. To tell the truth. To, no, to even voice his opinion. Yeah, absolutely. So she failed on that front. Bo Oprah interview was booed at an awards ceremony. Yep. Their popularity has an all-time low. And then they're on the cover of this magazine, really? So that's what makes me think it's a cash grab for Time Magazine yeah. and they just want controversy, which it is causing. Yes. Absolutely, it's causing controversy. Mm -hmm. It's all over the internet now. We're all talking about it. So um, I don't, I'm not taking it seriously. It's, uh, yeah, it's laughable. It's the most ironic publication other than Elizabeth Holmes that I've ever seen. Yeah. And it's... Just, uh, yeah, honestly, I think it's really serving um, to, it's proving to be a negative, really, for yeah. them. Of course, their stands are going to be like, you see, we always knew they were amazing. Yeah, or like 10 of them at this point. Yeah, they're going to use this as a, a way to legitimize them, but yeah. they are a, minor a minority. Yeah. For sure, they're a minority. Well, here's hoping that some of them can still be reasoned with, because I know that there will always be people who can't be reasoned with, but, you know, I just... I yeah. hope the truth can get through because it's so unfortunate when people don't want to listen to the truth. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And um, it's uh, unfortunately a fact of life. Not everyone does it. Yep. But it is a fact of life that yeah. we have learned, unfortunately, the hard way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, I have a lot of things left over and obviously we haven't done an Ask a Lawyer segment today because I, I kind of knew, I even told Zach, I don't think we're going to do Ask a Lawyer today because yeah. there's just a lot to cover. Um, next week I have, um, specifically someone asked me, asked me about Megan saying she donate her, so she did a voiceover for Disney's, um, there's like an elephants documentary. Yeah. And she said she'd donate, like instead of paying her the salary or the, the payment for the job, she wanted Disney to donate it to elephants without borders. Yeah. Um, I wanted to look into that and I did, but there's no more time to talk about it this week. Mm -hmm. So. I will save it for next week. You never know. We might have a quiet week and it's yeah. good to save things. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll tackle some ask a lawyer questions and we'll see what else we can come up with or what else next week throws at us. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I guess we're going to sign off. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah thanks for watching. And um, if you haven't subscribed, then please do. We'd really appreciate it. And like I always say, the more we grow this channel, the more we'll be able to offer you, our lovely audience. Um, follow us on Instagram if you haven't already. Thank you for all the love and support. You've all been very lovely to us. And yeah, stay safe. Even those of you who hate watch us. Same goes up to you, you know. <laughs> to look after yourselves. And we'll catch you next week. See you then. Bye.